Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Steve, and today we're going to be comparing two different but same watches. The Bulova Lunar Pilots. In one corner, we have the 45mm variant. In the other corner, we have the 43mm variant. Which one is going to come out on top? But before we do that, please, if you have done so already, hit that subscribe button down below and that like button. It really does wonders for the channel. All right, let's roll that intro and get started with the video. If you want to see a full review of these watches, I have done reviews on both of these. So please click the card up here if you want to go and see a full review of those watches. If not, let's go ahead and get started with this comparison. For the original Lunar Pilot, we have a case diameter of 45 millimeters, a lug to lug of 53 millimeters, a thickness of 13.3 millimeters, lug width of 20 millimeters, with a weight size to my wrist at 176 grams. This watch comes with 50 meters of water resistance and a sapphire crystal. The new version of the Lunar Pilot has a case diameter of 43.5 millimeters, a lug to lug of 51 millimeters, a thickness of 13.3 millimeters, a lug width of 20 millimeters. This watch offers 50 meters of water resistance and size to my wrist, it comes in at 169 grams. Now this version of the Lunar Pilot comes with a fully polished case. The pushers are also polished. The only thing that is brushed on this case is that bezel that's holding in the sapphire crystal. Now yes, the case difference between these two watches is a millimeter and a half, but the dial is still the same at 38.2 millimeters. So all they did was shrink in the case just slightly. They didn't really change the dial proportions or the hand layouts, anything like that. It's just the case has come in a millimeter and a half. Now the case finishing of the 45 millimeter variant is a sandblasted matte finish, brushed and polished pushers, and a polished push-pull eight millimeter crown. Both of these watches have a tiered dial underneath that sapphire crystal. The tachymeter is raised above the main dial, and then underneath you see a recessed second track. And then you have the main dial plate with baton indices around the entire watch and small rectangular indices at three, six, and nine. Also at the three, six, and nine, we see the subdials. At the nine o'clock subdial, we see the elapsed 60 minute counter. The three o'clock subdial is the tenth of a second counter. And the six o'clock subdial is the running seconds hand. One thing that you'll notice on the 45 millimeter that has since been covered up in the 43 millimeter is that date window between the four and five o'clock indices. This makes the 43 millimeter a bit more symmetrical, while the 45 millimeter is a bit more functional. They did not change the movement at all, so the 43 millimeter variant has a ghost date position. The Bulova logos on these watches differ ever so slightly with the current logo on the 45 millimeter variant and the historical logo on the 43 millimeter variant. Both of these watches proudly show off the 262 kilohertz logo in the six o'clock subdial. The bracelet of the 43 millimeter variant has been slightly upgraded in finishing, this one coming with vertical brushing on the outside links and polishing on the inside links, going to a butterfly clasp that has the Bulova tuning fork. And on the back, we can see that they added quick release spring bars. On the 45 millimeter variant, we have a matte bead blast going up against a vertical brush on the bracelet, going down to the butterfly clasp, which once again does have that Bulova tuning fork. And here we have openings where a tool can fit so we can remove the bracelet if needed. The case backs of the watch are once again very similar aside from the finishing of the case itself. They both have the same Apollo 15 mission details with the tuning fork logo right at the top. Now, when it comes down to the loom on these watches, the new 43 millimeter variant has just a little bit more, and I'm not sure if they changed the loom formula, if they added a little bit more loom to the actual batons and hands, but it's just a little bit more vibrant in the new watch. Now, overall, both these watches are basically the same. One just has a little bit bigger case that has a more contrasting finish. That, that bead blasted matte finish, just makes the watch stand out on your wrist a little bit more, where the smaller polished case, it actually blends in with your skin tone very well. It actually hides some of that size. When it comes to variants of these two watches, the 43 offers a white dial with blue accent, kind of like a Snoopy, right? I think that's why they did it. It has a Snoopy vibe to it. And the 45 has 
I believe, two or three different variants. All of them are black dials. One comes with two different straps, a leather strap and a NATO style strap. One has a polished case. And I, I could be wrong about this one, but I think I saw a PVD black below a Lunar Pilot. I could be wrong. I don't have my phone on me. Actually, I do have my phone. Let me see. Yep, there is a 45 millimeter black case variant. So if you want to go a little bit more stealthy, you can do that as well. Oh yeah, they also have the 50th anniversary version that's made out of titanium that has the gold accents. So there's actually more variants than I thought. But overall, both these watches have that lunar legacy that only the Speedmaster has. This is one of the only watches that has been to the moon. If you want something that is more historically accurate, yeah, go ahead and get the 43 millimeter variant. But if your wrist can handle it, or if you want the titanium version or the PVD black version, get the 45 millimeter variant. I think the key difference of this watch comes down to the finishing. Do you want something that's more polished, that looks a little bit more elegant, or do you prefer something that's a bit more utilitarian? Yeah, that millimeter and a half kind of makes a difference, but overall it's going to come down to that finishing. One is bold, one is more sleek. Now that when it comes down to the price, the MSRP for the new watch I think is $875, which is way too much in my opinion. I bought mine for sub $500 on eBay, but I think it was mislabeled. I think they labeled it as the previous model. And when I bought it, I immediately clicked buy now because I knew it was mislabeled. But even on the old watches, you can get those sub $300, which to me is a great price for the other moon watch. So let me know in the comment section down below which version of the Lunar Pilot you have in your collection or want to add to your collection, the 45 or the 43 millimeter variants. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. It really does help the channel. And since you're here, you might as well watch the full review of the 43 millimeter variant. It's right here. Go ahead, click it, click, click it. It's right here, it's right here, right here. Click it, click it, click it. <laughs> Please click, click it now.